Okay, welcome to the 11B, Chapter 25, Rehabilitation and Restorative Care. As usual, we're going to start with Section 2. Write down your questions. Ask them later if you're watching on video. If you're in class, ask your question live. Rehabilitation and restorative care. On day one, we talked about the different care team. We talked about rehab, which consists of PT, OT, and ST. Who knows what those stands for? <coughs> PT, um, physical therapist, occupational therapist, and speech. And speech therapist. So um, we have to know what they do. You can get a question that asks you which of the following CNA function is similar to what an occupational therapy does. Okay? So you like dressing the clients. That's like what they do. They help them learn to dress. That's what occupational therapists do. Uh, after they had a stroke, for example. Um, you, you know, so you have to know that. I, I gave the example of a person who had a stroke. We always give that on day one. They went to the hospital, they got stabilized. Then the hospital sent them for rehab. They go to rehab in the nursing home. The rehab team, the OT, PT, and ST will be taking care of them for a period. Could be three months or four months. Once the rehab is, is completed, they either have regained function enough to go back home, or they need to continue rehab. But it's no longer called rehab. It's now called restorative. The rehab have finished their portion. They will, they will now be transferred to nursing. Restorative is part of nursing. Um, restorative aids are CNAs that the facility will just train them to be restorative CNAs. So in my facility, all they do, we have one assigned to each floor. All they do is Every morning, those they have orders for those on restorative, what they need to be doing for them. So those things that rehab used to do, OTPT speech used to do for them, now that that has ended and they've transferred them to nursing, the rehab CNAs are the ones, sorry, restorative CNAs are the ones doing it now, for example. PT used to walk the person downstairs in the PT department, in the rehab department. So now they're gonna get an order to be doing, you need to walk the client 10 feet or 15 feet twice a day. The regular CNA assigned to the resident is not the one doing that. The restorative CNA will be the one to come and do the walking with the resident. But the CNA is also trained to know how to do that. That's why we will test you on walking the client. Same thing if the, if the physical therapy gave an order to do range of motion to the hand, range of motion to the leg, because that's the side that was paralyzed during the stroke. And now rehab is finished, restorative takes over. So basically restorative care continues where rehab stopped okay because it's cheaper <coughs> when a re when restorative is doing it under nursing than when physical therapy when rehab is doing that is very it's more expensive because they are more it's a more specialized work or it could be that um the resident needs to be wearing splints um, that paralysis caused their hand to not straighten out completely. So they're wearing a splint to keep it straight. 
All I could say, put the splint on every four hours, take off for one hour and put it back on. So everybody knows, knows what a splint is. A splint is just, let's say somebody's hand is like this. They will make something that will come like this. Then they will just straighten the fingers out. Then they will put a strap to keep it like that for a certain amount of hours. Then based on the doctor's order, if, if it's for four hours to stay on, maybe two hours to stay off, then it has to come off after two hours, after four hours. Then put back on after two hours. So it's, it's like a splint. So that's um, what this chapter is all about, um, overview. We talk about rehabilitation, which is to restore function. Physiatrist is a doctor that specializes in rehabilitation. Restorative care, I've already explained that. Con restorative care continues from where rehabilitation stops. Okay. Um, some factors that affect progress. Again, we talked about being patient with them, encouraging them. As they transfer from rehab to restorative, we are now the ones trying to make sure that they progress and not regress from the progress they made during the rehab. How soon it begins? It means it has to start immediately. Um, rehab ends today. Restorative starts tomorrow. Can't wait a week. Then they lose what they gain from rehab. There's pre-existing injury or disease where well, you cannot control that, but you need to start immediately. Overall motivation of the resident. You know, some resident wants to go home quick. They meant to go home after rehab, but they didn't quite accomplish the goal. They need to stay longer on that restorative, maybe another two months. Um, going home depends on how well they can function on their own. So they are motivated to do more. You know, resident used to say, when I go to see them, oh, um, anything that I need to know, I want to go home. I say, well, you know, we're trying to get you home as soon as possible. As soon as you're able to accomplish this and accomplish that. So I'm working hard, I'm working hard. So, so you encourage them, you know. The incentive is to go home after they're able to, you know, accomplish a certain level of um, restorative. Type of facility where a resident lives, combined effort of staff and others, attitude of the rehab team. So we all have to be positive and encouraging them to be successful. Again, for rehab to be successful, everybody has to work together as a team. All the people that work together on that rehab as a team, the doctor, the speech, um, those therapists we talked about, nurses, social workers, discharge planners, everybody's working together as a team. And for example, during that rehab, residents need to go to rehab at 10 a.m. The rehab assistant comes in to pick them at 10 and they're not ready, they're still in bed. Well, the Senate, as a team, as a care team, didn't do their part because you're supposed to know who needs to get up, who has an appointment, who needs to get up first. Um, when you start working in the morning, you're going to know who is going to an appointment at 9 o'clock, who is going to dialysis at 8 o'clock, who is going to rehab at 11, so that you get those people ready first because they're going to come pick them up to take them. So you don't want to arrive and they're not ready to go. Resident family also play a part, you know, in encouraging them. And the goal of rehabilitation is to regain as much function as they used to have before. Okay, so we talk about the goals and all of that. Um, we have to understand their diagnosis, their limitations. We have to be patient, maintain positive attitude. Uh, provide privacy, encourage independence, encourage activity, uh, report changes, lack of mot motivation, any kind of changes that they have um, to the charge nurse. The case studies, we've talked about these scenarios, so we don't have to worry about that. 
Um, even though it may be easier or faster for you to do, do the task yourself, but that's not helping the resident, you know. Um, let's say they want to go to the bathroom, they put the light on, um, you can just, you can come and say, oh, okay, I'm going to transfer you to the wheelchair and push you to the bathroom so you can use the toilet. Or if you're on a restorative program, you said, okay, um, I'm going to bring your walker so you can use it and walk to the bathroom. Because when you go home, you're not going to have me putting you in the wheelchair. You're going to be doing this yourself. So here's the walker. I'm going to assist you. I'm going to stand by you so you don't fall. Let's go to the bathroom on your own. So you let them do it. Um, what they're saying is, it would have been easier for you to just do it quickly and go. But have the patient and the time for them to do it themselves. So we'll talk about those. And encouraging positive, uh, encourage independence and, um, you know, be, be praising them as they're doing uh, better. Um, even when they're not doing better, still praise them and encourage them. You know, um, if they, like when I used to party train my son and um, some morning he'll wake up, he already peed in bed and he will think I'm going to get upset <laughs> that he peed in bed. Then I come and say, okay, son, it's okay, don't worry, it was an accident, you know. Tomorrow we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, okay, don't worry, then he will feel better. So, you just have to encourage them like that. You, um, we also have to understand that um, complication of immobility, it affects all the body systems. If somebody stays in one place and they don't move, it's going to affect everything in the body. All the systems will be affected. And we have to encourage them to participate in activity and do their exercises. Again, on the other hand, the benefit of exercise has a benefit to every system in the body. Exercise does the body good. Even your own attitude is more positive when you when you when you have exercise. <laughs> Sometimes when I when I get mad, um, let's say Madame makes me to get mad about something, I'll just go lift some weight. Then I feel better. <laughs> I was at the gym one day and you know the boxing bag, the big bag? This lady was mad. She had the boxing gloves on. <laughs> like, somebody must have pissed her off. <laughs> and she's like, in her, in her mind, beating up this person. Wow. But she's, yes, but she's hitting the bag, which is good. At least she can't get in trouble. Releasing the stress. Yeah, releasing the stress. So, and after that, she felt bad. Um, she felt better. Um, she's, you know, so, exercise always puts you in a better mood. Um, Sorry, anyway. excuse me. You said exercise is good for um, everything in the body. Yes, it is. Is it good for um, a patient that is asthmatic? Yes. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it expands lungs and allows them to breathe better. But remember, it's not too much exercise. It also depends on the type of exercise. Somebody who's asthmatic, they just need to go for a walk. Just smile, I mean a small walk. Also there's breathing exercise they can take. Take a deep breath, hold it, it expands the chest. You know, each time they take more, each time they take more. So, I mean, exercise, um, even for love making exercise, does. No, it's not, uh, I'm not, I'm serious. At least, I mean, first of all, it puts you in a better mood for it. And it gives you more energy. No, for real. I mean, like, sometimes when I don't perform well, my wife will say, you yeah, have not been working out. You yeah, have not been working out. I said, I haven't had the time now, so just manage. I'll, I'll work out next time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> exercise does the body good. Um, you have to know about. Um, I forgot I was recording this thing. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to do another recording. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, points about canes and walkers and crutches. You know, remember we are doing restorative care now. Um, cane helps to balance, okay? And there are different types of cane, C cane, functional grip cane, quad cane. Quad cane has four legs, okay? Walker helps to stabilize on the weak side. Crutches help to balance, to keep the weight even. You have to know <clears throat> um, guidelines about canes, walkers, and crutches. Um, check to make sure they're not damaged. Uh, make sure um, if, they, if they, they're wearing a non-skid shoes, they don't slip and fall. They are fastened. Use, yeah. I have that question because of this. Okay. It says um, exercise and stress can also cause the worsening of the smell. Okay. Right. 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 It really depends on the kind of exercise. Um, like I said, going for a walk or breathing exercises is good for asthma. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I you know sometimes even uh, two doctors can disagree <laughs> on something, but generally, it's a fact that exercise helps every body parts, everybody, every, every function, but it depends on the specific exercise. I, I, since I already messed Sorry, up. Sorry, excuse me. So if a question should come out on that particular, okay, because it was written in the, in the test book. Mm -hmm. So if a question should come out that does um, exercise worsen asthma, or does it incur, or is it good for asthma? What would be correct? Okay, we're not going to, if, if you say it's good, for asthma because I say so, we're going to mark you, even if, if, even if the book says otherwise, we're going to mark it correct. All right? Yes, sir. Um, just want to go like into that same question. Right. Um, we already signify that oh. asthmatic patients should not do the exercise according to the book. But again, it depends because you also told us that exercising the lungs Understanding deep breath, that also is a form of exercise. It is, so yeah. it breathing it is called, it's called maybe, breathing maybe exercise. You should not engage into physical exercises. Right. Or you should right. engage into something else. Right. Even, even the. Okay, back to the love making example that I gave you. <laughs> you are still online. <laughs> no, I understand. I already messed up the tape, so I'm going to mess it up some more. <laughs> there are some exercises that you do, and you're too tired to make love. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So it all depends on the type of exercise. If you go do strenuous exercises, you're not going to be able to function. But there are specific exercises that actually en enhances lovemaking. Like reading also is a form of exercise, exercising the brain or stuff. Well, <laughs> you're taking it too far now. Yeah, that's exercising the brain, but not the, not in the in the context of what we're saying in terms of exercise. Um, um, exercise here. Well, my own understanding just wants to contribute to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. When we say exercise, exercise depends on the individual. Like elderly people, there are some mild exercise they can go for. But we have found that we said exercise is good. There's no limit to start doing rigorous exercise. Of course. Even mm -hmm. as the, as young as we are, I will not involve myself in the exercise she's going to do. So it depends. Exercise just to help the body system in the world. Sure. That because I'm asthmatic, mm -hmm. I should be drawn myself. Just yeah. Yeah, just going for a walk is exercise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're not seeing, so sometimes even as they're wheeling themselves in the wheelchair, yeah. that yeah, yeah, that yeah. helps them. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know exercise is good mm -hmm. for the boys. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that like the book says that I, I understand. I I, of course, you yeah. have every right to yeah, because the book mm -hmm. said yeah. Yeah. something mm -hmm. different. I do exercise every day because the work I'm doing, you know, lifting. <laughs> okay, now let me let me correct something. The work you're doing is not considered exercise. Don't say because I work 16 hours, that's exercise. No, exercise is intentional activity. You do rep uh, do repetition of it in the in the in the name of exercising. For example, when I get tired I, in my office, I I just. Okay, let me go up and down the steps three times. Mm -hmm. I walk up to the fifth floor. I come down. Coming down is not exercise. <laughs> going up is exercise. 
Then I go, I climb back up, I climb, I come down, I climb back up, I come down. That's exercise. If I need to pick something on the fifth floor and I go up one time and stay there to do, to do something, that's not exercise. It helped a little bit that I took the steps, but it's not like continuous motion where I go up, I come down, I go up, I come down for the sake of exercising. You know, you're lifting one motion because you need to transfer that residence. That's not exercise. Because you're not burning that much calorie when you do that. When I get it's strain it's strenuous. Yeah, yeah, exercise, yeah. If I don't do, I won't be able to do the work to, to because function. you don't have equipment so to lift them. Okay, we have to move on. We have to Okay, last points. Yes. Like I don't know if you will still remember yesterday's place. There is a question that says um, when a child or a resident is having chronic coronary Breathing problem or something. Yes. I can't believe it. No, it's just a question. Is it good? What can you do for a resident with chronic coronary disease? Okay. So, I mean, I just took exercise. I don't even remember what I just did. What do you say? What's the Of course, the same thing. Exercise is good for the heart. Even when I wanted to choose. Remember, exercise. remember what, what, what is the problem with the heart is that. Those arteries and veins are clogged. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the fat has built up and then narrow it and block it. But when you exercise, you're burning the calories that now widens it. You know what? And it helps with respiration. You know what? Let me say that the person is chronic. It is person is. It doesn't matter if it's chronic or not chronic. So exercise at Ex any level. Exercise, but it has to be. The form of exercise the person can tolerate. Exactly. You cannot ask that asthmatic person to start doing exactly. push-ups or start exactly. lifting weights. But he can go for a walk. Yeah. Anybody can go for a walk. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. We we'll talk about ambulation. Yeah. You have to remember this because it's going to be it's going to be on your quiz um, when yes. you. Um, explain procedure to resident when you're trying to walk to resident. Provide privacy. Adjust the bed. Lock the wheel. Actually, this is not. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next one. Um, I'm just gonna explain it. I don't know if we've passed it though. We're not there yet. When they are holding the can to walk, which side should the can be on? Which side should they hold the can? On the weak side or on the strong side? Strong side. Strong side. Strong side. If you're walking the residence, which side should you be on? Strong side or weak side? Weak side. Okay. If you're walking the residence, which leg should move first? Strong leg or weak leg? Strong leg. Oh, good man. Look, everybody studied. All right. So if, if that's that's what the point I wanted to to, to um, mention here. Adaptive device is just any equipment that allows them to perform a function. Foot drop is when you know the ankle is like this in bed, but now it's like this. Okay. Authentic device, any kind of equipment that supports externally to for movement. That support the limbs, like auto. Remember orthopedic is uh, you know the doctor that specializes with movement, foot doctor and stuff like that. So if you get a question like, that has something to do with orthotic device, is something that helps them to walk. Can we use cane as an example? Yes. Cane, walker. Cane helps them to walk. Positioning devices, um, you know, position help them to align well. Uh, one of the skills tested in the JNA exam is Position the resin on one side. Can you wake her up? Yeah. Wake up, good morning. <laughs> you're gonna put the resin on one side and you're gonna put a pillow on the back to, to help them stay on the side. Mm -hmm. But there are other devices to use to prop them. There's uh, um, back rest, like a pillow mm -hmm. that weighs on the back. Um, there's another foam thing that you can use 
to wedge them on the back. It's not always kilo. They have some special wedges that you can use. Foot board, you know, padded board, pillow-like devices placed against the foot just to keep their, their foot straight like that. Bed cradles and foot cradles are used to keep the bed uh, covers from resting on the resident's leg and feet. So the, the bed cradle, so we don't want the sheets to be to touch their skin. So the bed cradle allows the cover to be over their foot without touching them. Heel protectors, uh, this is the heel and then they make it so that it fastens and protects the heel. If you don't have that, you can use a pillow to rest their heel on the pillow to prevent the heel from rubbing against the bed and then causing a bed sore. Abduction wedge, splints, pad, they keep the hips um, in proper positioning after surgery. And so sometimes after they, they've done like a hip replacement surgery, they put something there to prevent it from moving. But you're not gonna find that a lot in the nursing home. They're gonna do all that in the hospital and make sure the person is okay to go to the nursing home and not need those things anymore before we get them in the nursing home. Tr Trochanta rolls are rolled up bath or blanket towels that prevents the hip and leg from turning outward. So again, you know, you roll up a blanket and put, on, put one on each side to prevent um, it from moving. So you, you could be asked, no. is what? Okay. <laughs> But you know they updated the version, and we have to go to the new book. <laughs> I guess we'll just make pictures of the old book and keep because they not they don't have the old books anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know how they go to you know um, edition four, edition five. Mm -hmm. So we have to now go to edition five. But we'll take those pictures and maybe put somewhere, put on the screen so we can be we can be saying hand rolls. Um, cloths covered or wrapped grips that keeps hands or fingers uh, to stay in, in the position. I give you an example of yesterday where you can roll up the washcloth to keep the fingers in position. Finger cushion, kind of the same thing. Elbow protectors, same thing. Well, it's different. Elbow protectors, they're like heel protectors. They protect the elbow from rubbing against the bed. So you put it like this and strap it, you know. Like those parts, you know, like, you know, if you're riding a bike, they put, like kids have those knee protectors and elbow <coughs> protectors like that. Orthotic devices, talk about that, those already. Range of motion is just exercising. Um, passive range of motion means that the, uh, the staff is doing it, like only the staff is doing the range of motion. Resin cannot but uh, it's not able to participate. That's the passive. Active range of motion means that the resident is doing it themselves without the help of the staff. You have to know the difference. Passive range of motion, you're the one doing the exercise for the resident. Active range of motion, resident is doing the exercise by themselves. You're just observing or supervising. Because they can phrase the question and say which of the following is an example of a passive range of motion. Raisin does exercise by himself, or you do the, re do the exercise with the resident. So you have to know the difference, passive and active. They have active assistive range of motion. That's when both you and the resident are doing uh, the resident, you're doing it, the resident also assisting. Hyperextension, um, extending body joints beyond its normal range of motion. I gave you the example yesterday where resin was supposed to do range of motion to the leg. Instead of bending this way, she was trying to bend the other way, which is not the way, the normal way the leg is supposed to bend. So when you, when you extend a joint beyond its normal range, that's hyperextension. Do you have this in your book? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
So you can see abduction moving away, add coming back, extension, flexion, dorsiflexion, rotation, pronation, supination, opposition. We have seen this in the JNA exams, um, which are the following is an example of opposition. Don't say it's when don't say it's Republican versus Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> one party opposing the other part. Opposition is when you take the thumb and touch each finger. That's opposition. Supination is when you go like that. Okay? And pronation is the, the opposite way. Supination is like that. I mean, sorry, rotation is like that. And dorsiflexion is going like that. With the leg. Not the hand. Flexion is that way. Well, flexion is to come this way, extension is to go that way. Um, abduction, adduction. Okay. So, we've talked about all of those already. What? Somebody said something? No. Okay, supination, opposition, range of motion, follow the care plan, provide privacy, use proper body mechanics, support the joints. Keep the body proper in proper alignments. Begin at the shoulder and walk down. Um, follow the instructions. Never push further than it's comfortable. So, uh, I mentioned yesterday when you're doing the range of motion, you're gonna lift the hand up and just be listening to the resident. When they start saying "ouch," then that's when you stop there. Okay, but you can go as far as don't go past that much. Um, and then come back down. Provide holistic care while pro providing range of motion. Well, what does that mean? Provide holistic care while provide, providing range of motion. Okay. Okay. Give an example. Be, be specific. Give an example. Holistic care? Mm -hmm. uh, You're going to do exercise with the resident. And you notice something else, let's say they are sad, they are depressed. Then you're gonna you're gonna stop to address that first before mm -hmm. you might you might not even need to do the exercise anymore <coughs> if she's maybe she tells you she just got a phone call that her brother is dead. Or like in in, in DC, what the frequent things we hear from the resident when we go in on their side. They just got news that their grandson has been shot. Because all the shootings going on in DC, sometimes their parents are in our nursing home, or grandparents. Then they get the news, sometimes they see it on TV. And then once we, we go into the room, they're crying because of the news. That means you have to stop that medicine, stop whatever else, and try to understand what they're going through. That's an example of range of motion. Range of motion to the hand, I talk about that. Watch the video to see how it's done. We finally got to the end.